Hey everyone, it is Matt Weisfeld again with another live stream. See, you're going to be seeing a whole lot more live streams now with the current situation because I figure, uh, again, you all have plenty of time on your hands, so why not hear my voice? But again, not just to hear my voice, to learn some more about VPI and in general turntables uh, and different uh, methods and uh, procedures in general. So, uh, and again, all these videos after they're done live will be saved and put on our YouTube channel to look at later on if you miss it. This is actually responding to a question that I just saw in the VPI book, book VPI group, in the I Love My VPI group, uh, by Sarah, who apparently is getting Well Done Music Direct. I think I just saw Bess over there watching this, that uh, Music Direct is sending out their one-step pulley as well as some albums, so good to hear that they're still open and getting things out there. But then came that question, but Matt... How hard is it to change the pulley? And there is a lot of confusion. So, not confusion. I think just people getting concerned and worried and uh, kind of making it out to be a little more difficult than it is to change a pulley. And I promise you, not that hard. Here's the things about the pulleys. The first is the ones that are difficult are the ones from back in this day. Oh, and you can see me. Hi. There's a picture of a TNT turntable. That pulley is back in the days of when we would press fit pulleys on. So that was a lot more difficult to get off. Since then, now we are we use set screws. There's usually three, in some cases two in some of the earlier ones, but you can see right on the side here that we've got one, two, three set screws. And once you loosen that, you should be able to take it off. But then the other issue comes in, the fact that the folks at VPR are really strong. If you looked at them, they're totally jacked, and everything they do is just, you know, I'm just messing around. We just try to make it so it's tight and does the job, but every so often one maybe gets a little bit too tight uh, as far as when it gets put on there. So I'm going to just use my Allen wrench. This is an Allen wrench, uh, the size is escaping me at the moment, but this is an Allen wrench that comes standard with every VPI product, and I'm just going to go down here. And let's see if I can do this. Let's see. I'm just going to loosen. So hard to do with one hand. There we go. Loosen one. Try not to drop it. Loose. And again, the toughest part is the fact that I'm doing it with one hand. So if I didn't have this camera, it would be good to go. I know. I need a tripod. I actually have it at the VPI house, which is not helping me here. Loosen the next one. Loosen the third one. Now, I might be in good shape. If I'm strong, I might be able to take this and lift it. Oh, look at that. That just came right. Oops. No, anyway, it's got that off, so I was in good shape. But now, let's for argument's sake say that I tried to take this off and it was super tight. We have a hack for that, hence why we're doing the video, to show you how easy it is to put on. And I took a roll of paper towels, which I know is in high demand now. Not as much as toilet paper, but still a big deal. So I'm going to take a piece. And I'm just going to fold it up. Just like that there. Put it right here. And again, this will be really easy because this one actually is not a problem. Take care, man. Now I'm going to take a flat head. Put it right underneath here. And... Get a little difficult with one hand. Just lift it up. Ooh, it's, it's really, like, pointless to do because this thing is already loose. But So then you can take this, pop it up. And I kind of need two hands. So put that like that. Uh-oh. Oh. So put it underneath and... Thumbs up. So again, I just used the paper towel. The paper towel was to keep from blemishing and hurting it. Right, Melinda? It's just so easy that even even a child can do it. So we take that, put it there, use the flathead, it pops right off. So I just took this off. I'm good to go. Put that there, and now I take... Yay! Thanks, amazing dealer, or whoever got me my, uh, my one-step pulley. And it fits right on. So you just drop it on like that. And you're already halfway there. And then from there with this, we're going to... Inside the cover. <laughs> cover the X. Melinda, why is it I have a feeling that there's someone else using your account right now and speaking on your behalf? <laughs> so I put that on there. I'm going to take that same Allen wrench. I'm going to go right back in. I'm losing, I realize I'm starting to lose some lighting out there. And 
going to just put my Allen wrench in and I'm just going to tighten it up. Now, this is where there's, again, more confusion. Confusion is the wrong word. Um, people going overboard thanks to the forums. Perfect world if you have like, oh, wow, flutter meter, you want to use that, but not everybody has that. So instead, I'm just going to tighten this guy until I go until it's hand tight. And once you make it hand tight with all three set screws, then you want to go again and just give it like a little bit more of a half a turn to make it tight. And then you should be in good shape. And when you turn it on, the only reason you'd have an issue is if you turn it on and you can actually see the pulley flying all over the place. Because you don't want to tighten up one set screw so much that it's pulling the pulley towards uh, the, or rather, the spindle's pulling in one direction. And that's how you quickly and easily change the two-step pulley to a one-step pulley. And this is something that you'd want to do if you have a speed box being an ADS, an SDS, or even a PLC if you still have one. All those PLCs are older than me. So if you want to have a little uh, reminder of mortality, just remember, if you have a PLC, that's from before I was born. Anyway, that being said, everyone, this is Matt Weisfeld again with a quick quarantine Facebook live fun moment over here. And again, for that question that I saw in the I Love My VPI turntable group, when you get that one-step pulley, I believe it was Sarah, uh, when you get that tomorrow from Music Direct, you can very easily just swap that pulley, pop this guy on here, and there's nothing difficult about it. And, okay, good question about the SDS and ADS. SDS was the original Speedbox VPI made. Uh, older technology, it was definitely state-of-the-art of the day, and of that day it was uh, like 1992 or something when, when it was made. Um, and it really was just to control the speed. It had a readout. You uh, hit the button and you'd be good to go. And the nice thing about both the SDS and the ADS is that they both lock in at 60 hertz because your wall outlet is supposed to be 60 hertz, but we all know, well, not actually, I, I didn't know this before all this stuff, so it's not really a commonly known thing. That's actually just an average. So your wall outlet being 60 hertz, it's actually reading at like 59.5, at 60.1. I don't know, I'm making up arbitrary numbers. But so 60 hertz is an average. When you have an SDS or ADS, that's when you're actually locking in at 60 hertz. So that's one really cool thing there to just keep it locked in by getting clean power. Um, and then there's other products that are not speed boxes that do similar things like that. And then the other aspect of the speed box, giving you the ability to change from 33 and 45. The original SDS was using a digital aspect of it, and again, state of the art of the time, and as we went along, it uh, became more pricey, and the technology was older, and while it still did the job, there's plenty of SDSs out there that totally rock out. Once we brought Mike Bettinger on board, uh, our, our electric engineer and uh, grand poobar of anything electronics, direct drive-wise, phono stage, and speed box-wise, uh, that's when he looked at it from a different direction and did the ADS analog drive system to have a speed box with a fully analog driven system. When I, we first did the listening, we, we heard it almost immediately. It was uh, a little more open on the sound stage, larger sound, and just really sounded great right, right off the bat. And that was Mike's prototype, which really looked like a Frankenstein product. So it just went from there with it. But both products do the same thing. The ADS in its current base form does not have a readout. Actually, we were totally on track to having this set um, actually about four weeks from now, three, four weeks from now, but everything going on with the, uh, the coronavirus, all projects like that are just on hold, um, to be determined. Um, at this stage, uh, we've noticed that all of our su suppliers and partners in the state of New Jersey are able to stay open and are able to keep providing product. And, and again, good news at the moment we are also able to stay open, and I guess we are essential. So that's right, everybody. All the people who said things about your music before, you let them know that, that, that we matter. Our music matters. So we are still up and running. Um, unfortunately, not all of our suppliers were that lucky. All of our Pennsylvania suppliers, uh, New York suppliers, as it stands, uh, nothing's coming out of them. Which, at the same time, staying safe and staying uh, healthy is the first priority. And uh, But, hey... You know, listen to music during the quarantine is the best option uh, all around. And then quickly, a question that just came up was about the benefits of having three belts. And 
what I used to say and still call it in a way that having three belts is we call it the poor man's rim drive because a rim drive motor assembly can be expensive. Back in the day, it was actually, uh, um, I think it's $2,000 for the dual motor flywheel rim drive assembly. And, you know, that gets a little pricey. And you still need the speed box to go along with it. Whereas if you have an ADS or an SDS and a one-step pulley, you can experiment with one, two, or three belts. And it just gives you that uh, dynamics and a little bit more drive with the bass and just mm-hmm. gives you that rim drive sound without the the fidgetiness of a rim drive. And I love how a rim drive sounds, but I'll be the first to admit that a rim drive can be a pain. It can definitely have issues to deal with because now you have to deal with taking that rim and putting it on the platter every single time. Well, you're supposed to do it every single time. Most people don't. Then you can get a flat tire with the rim, then get a thumping sound. And these are all things just from the, the tweakiness of the rim drive. Nothing into the world. It's just things you have to keep looking at. The nice thing about a belt is once you set it, you're good. Same thing with direct drive. You hit the button, starts up, and you go. I'm kind of going all over the place with this. But the overall moral is if you have a speed box and if you have a one-step pulley, I strongly suggest uh, experimenting and finding your own preference from one to two to three belts. We actually had a guy who custom. I don't even know how he did this. He ended up adding, I think it was six belts to his HRX. Totally overkill, but he liked it. So, hey. I hope he's enjoying that rig during the quarantine. So again, folks, I hope you enjoyed seeing how to switch uh, the the pulley from a two-step to a one-step pulley. Keep sending questions and throwing things out there as they see them and they come up. I will gladly throw live streams up there to be a little more informative. And again, just to help us all connect. And next week, we have a VPI house e-party planned. More information on that as we come along. But uh, we figured, you know, the VPI house is sitting there nice and lonely, and we need to have a whole bunch of people from, the, you know, your own homes nice and safe there. So we will be having an e-event coming up this upcoming week, um, and uh, more information on that. Again, this is Matt Weissel of VPI Industries. Stay safe. And anyone who's watching that previous video, Shiloh was totally fine. Uh, and I look back at the video, it was totally my fault. I'm, I was 100% the reason that snow globe fell and broke and shattered all over this floor. And Shiloh was devastated that it was broken, but she'll, she'll get over it. Um, yes, uh, Paul, uh, Paul, uh, Damaris asking a question. Hey, Matt, is it possible to add extra belts on the classic two? Yes. But again, still, you will need a one step pulley. Um, and technically you can add more belts on the 33 setting because there's enough room in it. If we take a closer look at this pulley, there is enough room to put the belt on there for the two step for 33. You don't really have room. Uh, let's see if I get focused on this. There we go. Uh, there isn't really room to do it for the 45. Uh, so that is something that you can do. And again, this is Matt Weisfeld, VPI Industries. Hope everyone's staying safe um, and healthy. And I'll see you guys next time for the next live stream we'll be throwing out there. Take care.